Welcome to episode 12 of the Wealth Journey. I got a finance update for you today for the month of August 2024. I'm going to give you a full money breakdown. I know this is coming a little late, but we'll discuss that here in a second. Right now, we're going to jump straight into the numbers. I'm going to put them on the screen like I always do. So my total income between my job, my book, my financial coaching services, and my YouTube channel was $7,361. Plus, August was my birthday month, so some people did send me some money for my birthday, so I appreciated that as well. That also factors into that number. By the way, I do appreciate all the birthday wishes y'all put in the comments. Y'all really helped my videos grow by doing that, so thank you very much. Now we're getting to the fun part. My total expenses, and then we're going to break down the top three. We're going to have a fun discussion about that, but for my total expenses, it came out to $6,942. My budget for my expenses is $5,886, so I did spend way over, and we're gonna discuss exactly why that happened. And just in case you're curious, that's almost 118% more than what it was supposed to be. So as I've discussed in multiple videos at this point, it's always a competition between my rent and my giving that competes for the top spot in terms of how much I'm spending each month. This month, rent took the cake, it ended up being $1,806. Giving ended up being $1,692. Now we're getting to the interesting part. DoorDash was $799. I literally had to do a double take on this because when I was typing my numbers in and tracking my expenses and everything in my spreadsheet, which I will not be doing going forward, which I'll explain why in a second, it felt like it was just, okay, $12 here, $17 there, but no, no, no. It compounded, my decisions compounded into $700 and $99 by the end of the month of August. I do understand from my perspective that it was my birthday month. I did a lot of celebrating, I did a lot of eating, but that, that number is unacceptable because my budget for DoorDash is $200. And if you've watched my recent video on how to live below your means without missing out on life, I give you a whole strategy on how to counteract whatever your vices are. So you don't have to give it up, but you're just doing less of it. And I gave you that strategy about using your Apple cash card and just putting money on there and then just using that for your equivalent to DoorDash. And that's exactly what I did. The only thing is I didn't start applying the strategy until about 20 days into August. And by then the damage had already been done. And what I did was I added an additional $200 to that. And everything else below, like groceries and Muay Thai and gym, those are the last two standalone things that are somewhat expensive, but I fully plan for those to be around that area. And frankly, when it comes to my groceries, I need to be spending more. It would probably make me DoorDash a lot less. And then you can ignore that other column. That's just literally every other category combined. Not worried about that one bit. But that's why I always say in my videos about financial stability and everything, and even though my net worth does go up every single month and has been for a while, and even though I'm doing well financially, even though I am very financially stable, it bothers me to see numbers like 799 freaking dollars for DoorDash. And it's because I know what I can do with that money. I know y'all probably tired of hearing me say that, but this is only the fourth video in which I've actually put my mistakes on display and showed, you know, what my internal struggle has been with DoorDash. And the previous month that I went over it, which was the month of July, that was when I cut it significantly from April, May, and June. And the parallel that I found from that was when I'm really tracking my expenses closely, like on a weekly basis, it's very easy for me to keep that number down, but it's the it's the times where I'm busy due to work and things like that, or there's a lot of social events going on, or I just have a ton of video ideas and I just start batching video after video after video. And of course, I'm talking about the videos that are not related to the Wealth Journey series, just other standalone videos. Then I get away from doing things, the important things like tracking my expenses. And that's what my personal weakness is. And that's why I push that so hard on my videos about becoming financially stable because I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I am still continuing to make. And I'm not doing this on purpose or anything like that, but I do have a wonderful solution to this that I'm gonna be trying. And I'll let you know that in a second, but before I forget this extremely important point, that's why I always say every little bit counts. So when it comes to saving, when it comes to investing, every little bit counts. I've grown my net worth to 
over a hundred thousand dollars in a very short amount of time just in under seven years and that was with half of the time me not even taking investing that seriously but the same thing works in reverse every little bit counts when it comes to just spending money on convenience that twelve dollars the twenty one dollars that thirty five dollars here and there seems so insignificant until you actually add them all up and so the same way i say you know, if you're doing the things consistently, if you're saving the money, if you're going to work every day, if you're putting money into investments, if you're intentionally learning to get better every single day and you keep applying what you learn every single day, no matter how many bad days go by, you will be successful. You will grow your net worth. It's the same exact way in reverse, because when you ask yourself the question, well, yeah. I have six figures in my bank account. Well, yeah, I've been able to save ten, twenty thousand dollars How could I not? I've been doing the thing consistently. You got to say the same exact thing to yourself. And I had to say the same thing to myself when I look at the 799 freaking dollars. And I am, I'm actually kind of pissed about that. But anyway, I can only be mad at myself. Nobody forced me to spend that money on DoorDash. But I have to ask myself the question, how could I not have spent $799? I wasn't tracking money closely to where my vices are i was not being intentional about that and as a result i have to pay the consequence and literally pay the consequence in full and i did so very blissfully i didn't even know the amount of money that was leaving out of my bank account until i sat down after the month had already passed and typed all my numbers in my expenses and then boom 799 dollars came out and that makes a lot of sense because I know in my last video, my last net worth video, which was episode 11, I specifically said, yeah, the main reason that I didn't put money away into my savings is simply because I contributed $200 more to my Roth IRA, which is $700 total, which is partially true, except the fact that I mismanaged almost $600. And that $600 would have gotten me to exactly where I needed to go in every other category of my goals and of my finances. And I'm so glad I've been able to build a platform like this that generates me extra income because I'm able to generate an extra five, six, seven hundred dollars just depending on how the month is looking from this YouTube channel. And that's not an excuse for me to make any more mistakes or buy any more DoorDash, but I think this is an opportunity in which I need to be good with this money. And I also want to be transparent and just show everybody and just share with you that you can know exactly what you need to do. You can know exactly what you're doing. I coach this stuff. I help people improve their financial situations. I help people grow their net worth to $100,000 and beyond. And I still, if I don't follow part of my advice, I miss out on money. So if you're on a similar journey and you just can't get past the vice, look, this is the fourth episode, well, technically third, third episode of me sharing, look, man, I, I overdid it with the spending on DoorDash. And now that y'all are well acquainted with this vice, here is my solution to resolve this mess once and for all. Actually sticking to that $200 price tag that I spend on DoorDash. Because if you look at all the other restaurants and things, and I'll actually put that on the screen, restaurants and dates that was 52 dollars so i can't say that it's just eating out in general because it's not <clears throat> but the solution is sticking to that 200 dollars and then the other money that i've been spending we'll say i've spent an average of 600 dollars on doordash that gives me 400 extra dollars per month to play with that i can just auto assign to something before the end of the month and you know what I'm going to assign it to? My favorite account, my Weeble account. If you've seen any of my videos where I talk about and break down my investments, you know how much I love that account and how much it's grown significantly just over a few years. I've only had it since 2020 and my account has more than doubled. And that's free money that I have done absolutely nothing for other than the research and put the money into the stocks to then make the money grow, which is a fantastic way of making money. And that's what I like to teach people how to do. 
And I'm going to stick with that specific thing that I'm talking about. But I did have another idea just in case you had something similar and you wanted ideas on what to do. What I would do if I didn't feel fully comfortable with the first idea I just said, I would split 200 of the extra $400 and put it into groceries and then the other $200 into investments. The reason I'm choosing investments is because one, as you've probably seen, my net worth is majority investments. But two, I know I'm not going to touch my investments. Like I am so strict about not touching it. I have not cashed out any part of my investments. Anytime I've gotten out of a position, I put the proceeds back into a better stock like Apple or Microsoft, for example, but I never took it and then just put it into my bank account. That has never happened. And so I know if it's in my savings, I'll, I can be tempted to go into it. And that's why my savings gets moved around so much. And it's partially because I don't realize I'm spending so much freaking money on DoorDash. And it's like, oh, even though I had $500 for my savings, I'm going to move 300 back over here. And, and, and as you might have noticed, stuff like that sets my savings goal back. $2,000 ain't that hard to save, especially when you've seen that I've saved $20,000, $25,000, $10,000 over and over and over again. And some of that money I put into investment, some of that money I put into debt, blah, blah, blah. But I've proven I can do it over and over and over again to myself and to you guys. So $2,000 isn't a hard feat, but due to my vices, it is hard for me to keep that number consistent and put a consistent amount into my savings every month. Not because I don't make enough money, but because with that money, sometimes I get too comfortable. And since I'm acutely aware of that, now you're gonna watch me in real time invest this extra $400 a month and see what I can do with that versus the DoorDash. And perhaps at the end of the year, I can add up all the money that I've ever spent throughout 2024, which I don't really look forward to seeing that number, but I can add that up and see how much money could have gone into investments. And then we can look at the average return of said investments at the end of the year and see how much money that would have been in my bank account. And I think that would be the easiest and most powerful way to show you not only the power behind investing, but the cost of making financial mistakes, even if you do them deliberately or if you do them just like kind of unaware blissfully unaware and just $12 here $21 there $30 there it's nothing it's nothing I got all this money boom 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 and now you're about out of money so I'm extremely passionate about this topic as you can tell but I also do have another solution and this is another thing that I'm, that I'm going to be applying that I'm actually super excited for so I'm a busy guy I do think when you're first getting started with personal finances, you should prioritize manually entering in information just to make sure you're on your P's and Q's and you can definitely make sure the information there is accurate on your spreadsheet. And it's not that hard to keep up with. You could literally just create a Google sheet by yourself and just add up how much income you made and then make a separate section for how much you spent on expenses and then just keep track of that number. I'm a busy guy. I work a full-time job in a management level position, lots of responsibility. I run this channel. I'm building my investment product in which I teach you all how to invest once you become financially stable. And that video specifically will be coming out next week, but I also have like a full-on product that I think will blow your mind and, and really exceed your expectations in terms of value that you get within your life from it. But, but the course is called how to turn a few hundred dollars a month into six figures by using this proven stock market strategy. And even though this video has absolutely nothing to do with that, I thought I would share it with you because I'm just excited to share what's going on in my life with you right now. That's what these wealth journey videos are about. It's about me not just building my wealth, not just making my mistakes, but also what I'm working on for my audience, which I care deeply about and I work tirelessly to help. But anyway, actually typing out everything I am so freaking busy. But now I was like, okay, I'm super busy. I don't have time for this crap. Let's look into different products. So I've played around with certain products. I've spent money on some of them. And for others, they were free. The best product that I found so far is this app called Personal Capital. Well, it's formerly known as Personal Capital. Now it's called Empower Personal Dashboard. This is 100% free. I got it for free. And I have a link down in the description for you to get that as well if you want this. But basically, 
I'm using this now. And the only reason I didn't show it for the month of August is because I got it like, I don't know, halfway through August or something. So it wasn't gonna show everything that my spreadsheet that I just showed you has. But from now on, it is gonna show everything. And I checked it out, it is extremely accurate. It's not, it's not quite as physically appealing as my spreadsheet, but it's automatic and that's what I need right now. And it's super easy to track. And now I can look at that on a daily or weekly basis if I want to, and I can say, okay, I need to, all right, I'm, I'm done with DoorDash, we're good. And it's a way easier way for me to keep myself accountable. But if I have to base it on myself, entering numbers into a spreadsheet, I'm gonna be like, ah, I don't really feel like it. I'd rather, like, I would literally rather do a, a ton of things watching paint dry is one of those then like enter numbers into a spreadsheet it's it's not fun for me i don't enjoy doing it from a discipline perspective it makes sense but from a life perspective we got stuff to do and i feel that it's easier for me to track something that is automated and that is free that gives me accurate information and it's easy for me to have the expectation of myself and it's hard for me to tell you track your expenses put it into a spreadsheet but i'm not even doing it in a timely manner and my finances suffer because of that but it's very easy for me to expect that of myself and then be like hey why can't you do it it's super easy you just download the app link it to your bank account and then boom it tracks it for you why would you not do that you get what i'm saying then you'll be able to ask yourself questions like how would i not be able to save more money every month i'm tracking my expenses and so to me it just makes sense to do it like that we're going to jump straight into my savings now because even though I already mentioned some of it, it's still important for me to share it with you. So I really only put $700 into my Roth IRA. I do consider that to be savings because that is my retirement savings that is just invested into stocks. And every single month, as you will see in my paycheck routines, I do put $700 into that. But initially, I like to put 550 into my Roth IRA, but for most of the year, I was only doing 500 and I was building up my savings account and my emergency fund. But I realized it's best to just focus kind of on one. But if you focus on all three, it's going to be a really slow burn process. And I set out at the beginning of this year to max out my Roth IRA and I'm going to do just that. And that is my number one priority and whatever else is left will go towards savings. It just so happened that I went way over on DoorDash this time around, like almost $600 over. And now you know why, and now you know the full story why. But anyway, I hope that gives you like a clear, transparent picture of what I'm working with right now and how I plan to fix it. And you can watch it be fixed in real time. And now that I fully know where I need to slow down at and exactly why and what it's costing me, I can be even more tenacious about this goal and I can have even more tangible examples that you can see that I'm not just speaking from like, theoretically, if you do this, you'll save money. Like, no, I've made this mistake. If you cut this out, you will save more money and you will be able to do things that you never thought you could do, like invest, like build up your emergency funds in three to six months. You can do this. I have the utmost faith in you and I appreciate you for watching this video. Click the link down in the description if you want to get an Empower account 100% free and that's gonna track your expenses for you. All you gotta do is look at it and set a cadence for how often you look at it. I'd recommend at the very minimum once per week. That's exactly what I'm gonna be doing if not every single day. And if you got value from this video, type the words wealth journey in the comments to let me know that you enjoy what you saw. And if you want my savings trackers and net worth tracker, that is down in the description as well. But thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.